On today's show, Fintan Costello of BonusFinder.com joins us, talks a little bit about his site, and shows us some differences between the European market and the U.S. market for sports betting. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Everywhere you turn, it's the same old sports talk, the same headlines, the same news, and the same boring information. This podcast is here to change all of that. We bring you hot sports takes, winning sports betting strategy and picks, reliable gaming industry news, and breaking interviews with some of the biggest names in sports business. My name is Ryan Noople, and welcome to the Noop Sports Show. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Noop Sports Show. I'm your host, Ryan Noople, here with you each and every time. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to tune in, listen, maybe learn something, have a little fun with us as we talk iGaming, sports betting, sports, anything in this industry we like to cover. So thank you for being here. Today, I have another special guest. As always, I have Fintan Costello. Fintan is with BonusFinder.com. Fintan, are you with me? I sure am. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. I appreciate you joining me here. I can't wait to see where this discussion leads. You know, sometimes we have interviews and things that I kind of know where the discussion is going to go. This one I'm pretty excited for because I'm not 100% sure where we're going to be leading into and what we cover today. So kind of excited to chat with you, Fintan. Great. Me too. I'm yeah, me too. I agree. That's awesome. So give me a little background. So tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, where you're living, how you kind of got into the iGaming space uh, yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm, as you can tell by my accent, I'm not American. Uh, I'm Irish. Um, I live in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And I stumbled into the gambling industry completely by accident. Uh, So by background, I'm kind of a a marketing nerd. So it's the digital marketing. Uh, I was living in Dublin at the time. And I wanted to do more uh, more, more digital marketing. So I just assumed I'd have to move to London where there's a huge, uh, advertising industry and it's, it's some amazing advertising comes out of the UK. However, I, I, I bumped into the guys at Paddy Power, uh, which are obviously what are they call these days, the stars group or, sure. or no flutter. Sorry. It's, it's flutter these days. Uh, so Paddy Power at the time was very much the, the number one, uh, retail bookmaker uh, in in Ireland, and they'd been ramping up aggressively their their online presence of so PaddyPower.com. And what I really liked about them was they were super focused on taking market share in the UK, which which for an Irish company is actually quite quite unusual. Our Irish companies are typically quite insular, mm-hmm. um, so it's very rare to see a, an Irish company kind of go go big internationally. And at the time, they were working out of what can only be described as a very large barn or shed uh, in a very rough part of Dublin uh, in Tala. And so I was completely blown away by the guys, super, super smart guys. Um, and I joined there to basically set up their, their centralized their, their online marketing department. I knew nothing about gambling. I was a complete, I literally went and bought dummy's guide to betting and Mm -hmm. the racing post and did a few like did a lot of research uh before before even the interviews to try and get up to speed and then got completely sucked into the industry within like the first first few weeks and in the uk there's a there's a famous horse race called uh, or festival called sheltonham Mm -hmm. um which is jump racing and it's just an insane kind of four days and when you see an entire company kind of get so animated and the buzz and the energy on the trading floor and, and everything going on and it was just just an amazing industry to kind of get sucked into um and that was it it was it was one of those things i got i got pulled into the industry and it, it's been impossible to leave ever since so mm. i've been bouncing around uh, a few different companies and consultancies and uh we're now working on our own stuff now with, with bonusfinder.com and yeah it's, it's been a it's been a hell of a journey that's amazing. That's that's very cool. I love hearing the. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts of these. You know, hearing the story and hearing where people came from, and everybody has a little bit of a different background. I think you and I share one thing in common. We both love digital marketing, and we both love gaming and gambling. I mean, I think uh, the digital marketing marketing space is a space that I dearly love, and and like. It's funny. I used to just, it used to be like a hobby to me. Like, Oh man, I love this whole area. And now it really gets like integrated into your business as you start like using it in other areas and digital marketing just becomes almost like a lifestyle, right? It's not, it's not even like, uh, I'm just, I like this area. It's just part of my life now, which is, uh, which is amazing. Yeah. Like I, I had, I had two weeks off, uh, took two weeks holidays two weeks ago and kind of coming back to, you know, it's that classic kind of summer holidays. Mm -hmm. You come back to work afterwards. And I couldn't wait to get back because I realized that, you know, particularly doing what I'm doing right now, 
it is such a lifestyle and yeah. it's so what i do i enjoy it, it's always a cliche you know do what you like and mm-hmm. everything's easy or whatever i do feel like i'm in that really lucky position right now where i'm enjoying it so much you know we, we a lot of work there's a lot of hard sure. work a lot of hours and stuff but i really don't mind um and that's that, that's amazing um so I'm, so I'm very lucky with that yeah um and then obviously it's easy when things are going well as well. So I can't yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, that's a very good spot to be in. I mean, as a, an entrepreneur and a, a business startup, you know, business owner, um, you know, it's not always easy. We all know that. I mean, there's always challenges, there's always things to do, but I think when you look at the flip side and, and for those of us that have been in other areas and, and done other things, you know, wouldn't have it any other way. And I think it sounds like, you know, you're in a really good spot now with bonus finder and, and some of the things you're doing now, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the now, you know, what's going on. Uh, you talked about bonusfinder.com. Is that your only project? What else are you, uh, well, first, what, Give us more about Bonus Finder. Tell me what it is and uh, why it came about. Sure. So for Bonus Finder, uh, we so we're we're really focused on helping people play with more. So typically, you know, for for the so there's there's when you look at play when you look at say online gamblers, uh, just to keep that as a definition. Mm-hmm. There's lots of different types of players. So you know you've got your super high end VIP guys who want VIP managers and very particular games and they've got what they want um you've then at the other end of the spectrum you've kind of got the the arbitrage type bonus abuser type players um so they're kind of typically the two extremes and then you've got the rest which are the more casual um look i've got 20 dollars. i want to have some fun and i want to maximize my 20 dollars. so it's the real kind of casual um core player which which makes up you know 80 90 percent of the database for for most operators we're really focused on these guys so our, our mission and the way we've kind of designed the website and uh, the filtering systems and how we present the brands is really about helping people figure out based on their budget and their game type and what they want to play and what they want to bet on will help you find the best possible bonus for that and we'll present it in a really, really easy to understand way. So you don't really see it too much in America right now because the bonuses are actually quite simple. But when you look outside of the US, so if you look at, say, the UK or Sweden as, as good examples, there's typically um, a bonus bundle. So it's your first deposit, you're going to get 100%. Your second deposit, you're going to get 50%. Mm-hmm. Your third deposit, you're going to get... So you've got all these complicated... Um, deposit values and percentages and wagering requirements and they'll have deposit free spins and no deposit free spins so it's actually incredibly complicated for a user to look at a headline from a from an operator and kind of figure out what what that actually means so our system does all that work for you so you say right i want the best possible bonuses for 50 Mm dollars or i want the best possible no deposit bonuses or the best possible maximum bonuses or whatever it is that that you're that you that you want and then our tool will basically figure that out. So, and it's, and again, as an affiliate, it's a cliche to use hmm. travel as the example, but it's like, you know, you go to booking.com and you say, oh, I want to travel to Paris and I want to go to these dates and I want this, this, and this. So you can kind of give your, your order criteria and then they'll show you what's available. We do that from a, from a gambling perspective. So we're, we're quite neutral. Um, and it's really about presenting the, the data and the facts to the user and, and people love it. So it, it's, it's hugely popular. Uh, we get a lot of returning traffic. We, you know, our conversion rates through to operators because people have really spent a lot of time considering the offer and, and what they're looking for is, is fantastic. So uh, players are happy, operators are happy. And as long as we keep providing uh, a value added experience to the user, I think long-term we're going to be okay too. Yeah, I agree. I think you have a nice slick kind of clean design on here too. Sometimes I think some of these sites get really messy. I mean, sites that I've designed as well, they just get really jumbled, right? And a lot going on. I mean, this one looks very clear as you go out and look at bonusfinder.com, kind of very clear, precise, um, kind of gets you to the spot you want to get to. So great job with that. I think you did a good job. Is this your first time um, I guess being in the affiliate space, like being an affiliate yourself, I mean, is this uh, your first project or have you done others or have others going this, on as well? This is, so it's just, just on the design. So there's an amazing team who do all the design and product design and stuff. So they're, they've got to get all the credit for that. I'm it, definitely <laughs> not the designer. Um, they've, you, you shouldn't let me design anything. Uh, so there's an amazing team to take care of all that. So yeah, so from an affiliate perspective, I, 
I've worked as an operator. Um, I have worked as a consultant. I have worked as a consultant for affiliates. So I've actually helped some of the biggest affiliates in the world uh, fix marketing problems. But this is the first time I've ever actually worked as an affiliate myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually been an affiliate manager. So I ran the affiliate <laughs> management team at Paddy Power. So I've, oh. I've literally done everything but this. Sure. Um, so yes, I, I, think, I think this finally kind of ticks off that box as well as the industry completed. The only thing I haven't done is launch a slots game. Um, I think once I've done <laughs> maybe that, next. or maybe next, well, I don't know, it's tough. It's tough. I've, I've helped somebody do it, but it, it is, it's very tough. Yeah, because uh, it's all about distribution. Um, and yeah, so this is the first time as an affiliate. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, it's a very different, um, how would you put it? It's a very different business model. And it, it's really interesting. As an, as an affiliate, it's really interesting to see the industry from this perspective, uh, particularly particularly outside, because obviously within the US, it's, it's quite difficult to get a within the legal US space, it's quite difficult to get the license. Mm-hmm. So there's only a handful of operators per state and it's, it's very jumbled and it's quite quite strict. Outside of the US, so if you look at people operating under say a UK license or a Malta license, um, it's actually very quick and easy to get to market. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a huge amount of startups in, in the space. And you know we must get probably 10 emails a day from new brands that are launching uh, looking to work with us, so uh, so as a as an affiliate, it, it's quite interesting to see that. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy, um, and and some of them like okay, the, the difficulty is because they're brand new. It's very difficult to tell. Well, are these guys going to be in business in six months' time? Sure. So if we're working off a off a revenue share model, which which we do um, outside the US, uh, we really need to kind of weigh up these kind of pros and cons of like, well, how long are these guys going to be in business? Um, can they do they have actually any retention experience can they keep the customers once they've got them in are they giving good experience uh, are they you know taking responsible gambling seriously are they good good actors within the space as well is this somebody we're happy to go play with ourselves so the the, the filtering process of, of who we work with um, is is actually quite laborious and, and a lot more work than I than I anticipated. I, I actually thought it'd be quite simple, <laughs> and then I've just had my mind blown of wow, this is uh, I, anybody can launch a <laughs> launch a brand. This is, this is crazy. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, a lot of people do think the affiliate life is the the easy way, right? It's oh, I put up a site, I'll throw up some ads, I'll throw up some links, and I'm good. No, I mean it's a uh, gosh, there's just a lot that goes into the affiliate lifestyle, and I've been in. I've been servicing affiliates. You know, we obviously do content creation Mm. around this space. So we've been servicing affiliates for decades, for 15, 20 years. And so I understand this space probably as good as anyone around. And man, there is a lot that goes into it. It's not as as simple as doing that. And then you got to worry about your rankings and your traffic. And obviously without traffic, there's no clicks. Without clicks, there's no revenue. Without revenue, there's no business. So it's a... it's a it's a good business, but it's a challenging business. So well, it, I, I it, commend it's, you. It it's it's a it, it is because because the barriers to entry are so low that anybody mm-hmm. can start, say, a website or a Twitter account or a Twitch streaming yep. or or come up with something completely new. Right. The, 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 this is the beauty of affiliate marketing. That's mm-hmm. why I love it so much because uh, I wouldn't say anything goes, but you're always looking at well, what's going to work and what's the next trend and am I positioned right. But because the barriers to entry are so low, like there's definitely two kids in a bedroom somewhere that are going to put me out of business <laughs> in, a, in a few years. Sorry, that, that's that's going to happen. Yep. Um, I, if I take things for granted and and don't keep evolving, and from a, the operator's perspective, you know, obviously they really like us right now because we're sending great traffic and you know we've got good partnerships. But if we stop sending traffic mm-hmm. and somebody else can send them traffic, the 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 brand loyalty to us isn't isn't exactly that strong. So. The while the, the, from the outside the affiliate the affiliate Instagram hashtag style lifestyle looks amazing. Uh, <laughs> the realities of it are you know it's, it it can be quite stressful. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the you know you've mentioned a couple times now the differences between you know kind of the U.S. market and maybe the European market. You know, I know from an affiliate side, you mentioned that barrier to entry. I do think the barrier to entry in the United States is definitely harder. Like you said, the licensing process is tedious. Maybe you have to become a vendor in each state. There's a handful of books that go through this long licensing process. Um, give me some other examples of maybe. I don't know, differences or similarities that you see between European um, gaming industry and what's going on here in the US? 
So I think so. For, so from our perspective, we've we've really focused on the U.S. licensing process itself. So we've tried to make that a, a core part of our business. So we actually got our sixth license on Friday. Uh, so we're now licensed to operate in Tennessee. Um, obviously, I don't think any bookmate, any sports <laughs> have a license yet. Yep. But when they do, call me, yeah. um, and we'll we'll sort something out. So we've we've got all the licenses that we can get so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has been, uh, it's definitely been a culture shock. Yeah. Um, the, when you, cause you think of like, as an, as a non-American, you think of America as, as a country, but it's actually, you know, lots of little countries mm-hmm. and every state's got its own thing. And every, it does feel like every state when they launch a licensing process are trying to, you know, they all copy from each other, but then they ask three or four more questions that nobody else has. Mm. and so you just end up with an even more complicated you know so one yeah. state might want um what was it uh five years worth of residential history and then the next state wants every place i've ever lived since i was 18 and then <laughs> the next state wants uh credit card statements for the last 18 months and bank statements for the last three years and so you just end up with this kind of mission creep of more and more and more and more um Luckily, I've led a very boring life. I've always paid my taxes and I've never been mm-hmm. in trouble. So it's actually relatively straightforward for me, <laughs> um, which I don't know, may, maybe be more exciting if I'd met, led a better life. <laughs> anyway, um, but who, who knew it at all? That's for another off, podcast. Yeah. We'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in this one instance, I'm really, really good at filling in forms. Um, but what you're seeing in other markets is, so if you take probably Sweden and the UK are probably the, the, the hot topics at the moment uh, in Europe, where the UK historically was the leader in online gambling. So they, mm-hmm. you know, they were one of the first issue licenses. Uh, it was a very uh, permissive regime. So you could basically just, you know, be sensible. There were some advertising codes, uh, responsible gambling codes, but you, you could just kind of get on with it. As an affiliate, there was no, and there still isn't any licensing requirements. So literally anybody can become an affiliate in the UK. Mm. What's What happened then was, you know, when you kind of let a million, you know, a million monkeys at a million typewriters, you're going to get Shakespeare in some instances, and then you're going to get stuff that you're really not happy with in the other instances. So there was some affiliates who probably pushed things too far and um, were doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. And this has kind of created a bit of a a backlash and a, a clampdown by operators who had to take on more responsibility for the marketing that their affiliates were doing. And in a lot of instances, they didn't really know who their affiliates were Mm. or what their affiliates were doing. So we're kind of seeing this kind of tidal wave of change happening in the UK where for the first time affiliate licensing in the UK is becoming an actual conversation. Um, I'd much prefer it because what's happened is because so many operators now in the UK have been fined for various breaches, the the due, the due diligence they're putting on place to just sign up for an account as an affiliate is the equivalent of applying for a license in the in the US. So I'd much rather just apply for one UK license, have my license, give the license number to an operator and open an account and get going rather than it, you know, rather than having to fill in, you know, uh, 300 different applications for, for 300 mm. different brands or whatever it is we're going to do. Um, so I, I do think the, even though the, the U S process, you know, it's a state by state level and it's, it's moving, but it's not as good as it, it could have ever been. It's still actually, I think a better way to do things ultimately, uh, than what we've actually got now in, in the UK. And then in Sweden, it's, it's, it's in a way it's gone even, I suppose the, the difficulty for operators is no politician is ever going to lose votes for being seen to be tough on gambling so if you're a politician and you're going to so what they're looking at at sweden is things like limiting how much you can deposit uh, with operators and um, creating like a central database to mm. kind of monitor how much you're depositing across brands they're talking about time limits so kind of you can only gamble between certain hours mm-hmm. and they're really trying to so they went from a situation where there was a state monopoly but then there was kind of a big kind of gray area in the law so there's a lot of brands They introduced licensing, brought everybody within the fold. And now all of a sudden they're kind of ramping up lots and lots of restrictions. So what they're actually doing in Sweden is the restrictions are getting to such a point and we've got the data that shows actually the gray market or the black market in Sweden is actually growing rapidly now. So operators are limited in terms of the bonuses they can offer to Swedish players. But if you're an offshore brand targeting Sweden, you can still do whatever you want. 
So Swedes are actually looking, actively looking for, and the search trends are huge now, actively looking for non-regulated brands to go bet with again Mm -hmm. uh, because they know they're going to get a better experience. So it's kind of the seeing the pendulum swing completely the other way where the rules become so strict that you actually create, basically they got rid of the black market and then they've literally just created it again in the space (laughs) of, in in less than a year. And it's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, and obviously in the US, the the the, the offshore market is still a huge, yeah. huge, huge part of the business. And I think that that is the biggest argument for for regulation and licensing yep. in the US um, to take care of that. Um, which is why I, th- I do think the the state by state approach of having to partner with land based casinos and operators and stuff, I think ultimately that's probably not the best idea because mm. uh, it does limit choice and it limits competition. And I don't think that's ever uh that ever wins in the long term but as a short-term process to to get licensing in place and and kind of normalize things and and get a structure in place i'd much rather a a slow and steady approach than kind Mm -hmm. of a big bang and then trying to reel things back once the once things you realize things are out of control yeah that's uh that's some really amazing insight i love hearing kind of some of that stuff that i i maybe don't have my uh head wrapped around what's going on in the uk all the time because i'm so focused on what's going on here in the u.s that when i hear stuff like that it makes me kind of makes my eyes open like yeah i I totally understand how it can like kind of i don't know how what to say but like uh it can bite you in the butt you know you put too many regulations on there and then all of a sudden people are turned away from what's going on so there's a fine line there between how many how many how much regulating you do in this industry um and so hopefully the united states is taking notes i or the each state is taking notes i know we we make that comment all the time that we are living in 50 different countries here and it's insane but uh hopefully they're kind of taking notes and seeing some things that have went wrong elsewhere and can maybe um, make it better here, but I don't know. It's a, uh, it's going to be a long road. I mean, there'll be a lot that changes over the next five years, I'm sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think, I think gambling is such a core part of American identity as well. It's uh, such a cultural yeah. thing in the U S. Um, I think that that's something that I think for outsiders looking in gets completely overlooked um, in terms of how ingrained it is, even though, you know, it's, it's not legal in a lot of States still how ingrained it is in, in society. Yeah. Um, which I think is, is fantastic. And you know, the way it should be. Yeah. I, I think there was no better, you know, um, testimony to that than when what we've been going through here re- recently, when all the sports were kind of shut down and people were freaking out. I mean, people in the United States didn't know what to do with themselves without sports and, and not that gambling and betting is a hundred percent associated with that, but you know, that's a big piece of it. The fantasy sports piece and the, you know, the betting on it and things of that nature, all the things that come around sports, um, when we didn't have anything going on, man, people have like kind of like lost, lost in life. And I think a lot of that had to do with sports. So that kind of just, it, it says a lot about what we, what our culture is here and we, we, how much we rely on sports in the United States. Yeah. I think when, when you're betting on uh, Ukrainian table tennis, you oh, realize that uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we need to reassess a few things. You're taking it too far. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Fintan, man, I could talk to you forever. I really think uh, I, I think we need to circle back around and have another one. I don't like to make these more than 30, 45 minutes because I know you're a busy man. you got a lot going on, and I want to make sure the listeners uh, don't get too much in one episode. So we're going to cut this off. But, man, I could uh, definitely get back with you, and maybe maybe next time we'll talk a little more digital marketing. I think we could get yeah, a, lot of, uh, a lot of – a lot of I, I tell you, you have a lot of experience. You have a lot of um, – ideas in all these areas and i'd love to kind of tap your brain on some of that stuff as well so let's uh let's schedule another date for uh another show brilliant let's do that thank you so much awesome well this is fintan costello the um head guy over at bonusfinder.com he likes to call himself a gentleman adventurer on linkedin i love that term it made me made me smile i don't even know what it means but it's a uh, it made me smile. So Fintown, I really appreciate it. If anybody's listening here and they want to get a hold of you, want to learn more about what you guys are up to, uh, how would they do that? Uh, bonusfinder.com is the main website. Mm-hmm. My Twitter is uh, Fintown Costello, at Fintown Costello, or I'm on LinkedIn as well. And you can send me a message there. Amazing. Amazing. Any last words for the audience before we uh, let you go here, Fintown? That's everything. Thank you so much.
Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in to another show here. We appreciate all of you. I uh, hope you're all staying safe. Hope you guys are enjoying what's going on with uh, sports kind of coming back here. And uh, hey, guess what? Football is right around the corner. Let's hope and cross our fingers we get an NFL season this year and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Fintan Costello, bonusfinder.com. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day. Talk to everyone soon. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Noob Sports Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing to our iTunes channel today. Plus, visit us at noobsports.com for more picks, previews, strategy, and news. That's K N U P sports.com.